Another month down, another month of free entertainment. From the App Store and Google Play, GameRex brings you the 10 best free iOS and Android games of July 2016. Number 10, Room of Doom Minion Madness, which if you like WarioWare, is basically the iOS and Android game for you. To put it like social media, this game will give you those feels. But on top of that, the rooms slash levels are designed incredibly well. It's extremely addictive. This is the kind of game that you look for times to play because it's really enjoyable. On top of that, the game was very clearly designed with a lot of love because it is polished as all hell. On top of that, the progression of this game is very good, so it's easy to get into, but actually requires you to develop skills in the game to get further in it. Number nine, Blue Angels Aerobatic Sim, an airplane aerobatics simulator licensed by the US Navy. For fans of flashy flight, this is most certainly the app you've been waiting for. And if you're familiar with the Blue Angels from the US Navy, their official maneuvers are included in the game. Now this is a little bit more in depth than you're probably used to from a mobile game. The only minor complaint I might have is that a lot of fans of flight simulators don't like to be directed a whole lot. They like a more open-ended approach, and this is more directed at stunts. But if that's not a problem for you, you're probably going to enjoy this game. Number 8, MU Origin, which is the latest 3D MMORPG that attempts to simplify the experience of an MMORPG without making it dumb. And for the most part, I have to say it definitely succeeds. It also gives you a full open world to PvP in. Now, I'm not going to say this is the best MMORPG I've ever played in my life, but it really does a good job, and oftentimes you're kind of looking for a new experience. And MU Origin Systems, as well as its auto mode for when you want to do something at the same time, make it a definite worthwhile try. I'm going to give this game more time in the future, because I did enjoy it quite a bit. Number 7, Suicide Squad Special Ops, which is perhaps one of the better first-person shooters I've played on mobile. It plays just a little bit like Call of Duty zombies, which if you don't know is a super fun mode in Call of Duty. It's basically a wave-based shooter and takes a smart approach to the graphics, going with the colorful but not super detailed look. It's not realistic, but it comes together and looks very nice. This game is seriously a load of fun. One thing to watch out for though, this is kind of a buggy game. I'm sure they're gonna fix it because there's a lot of people playing it and the general consensus seems to be that it's a great game but needs some fixes on the bugs. But if you can handle that, play it now. I mean, it's a lot of fun. Number six, Combo Critters, which if you're looking for some monster hunting action without the go aspect, which we will talk about that later by the way, Combo Critters offers a spin on the Pokemon concept that makes it worthy of its own game. It takes a decidedly different style than Pokemon, with simplified battles and a more goofy approach to monster design, and the length of the game itself is a little bit short. You're able to beat it in about three to four hours if you really go hard, but the development Developers are also promising to extend both the content and features of the game. As it stands now, it is a great game and really enjoyable to play, and knowing that it will expand means that I'm going to want to come back to it. Number 5, Arcane Quest 3 is the third in a series of Hero Quest inspired board game adaptions that truthfully is starting to finally not feel like a board game adaption, it really feels like its own series. It's a turn based dungeon crawler with a dice system for battling enemies. It also does a great job in the graphics department, meaning it made the jump from the previous game's mostly 2D graphics to entirely 3D graphics, and it really looks good. The great thing about this game is that it is an advanced take on this genre, but unlike a lot of the other advanced takes that you'll find on mobile, they managed to make this game easy to pick up. And I feel like that can only come from experience, and the Arcane Quest developers certainly have that. After three games of innovating and refining, Arcane Quest 3, definitely worth your time. Number 4, Rerunners Race for the World, which, I'm just gonna get this out of the way, title's a little bit deceptive, it's much more than a racing game. Oh sure, the multiplayer races are a ton of fun, don't get me wrong. But there's also an open world to explore and various things to complete. And all the various things that you can do in this game make me say this is probably the most original platforming game on mobile this year. There's a lot of developers that try to do platforming on mobile, but this one delivers in a way that I feel like most games have been missing. There's leveling up, the races are fun as hell, and the open world brings a lot of depth. Number three, Rival Fire is a full featured multi and single player shooter that really brings a more advanced take on that gameplay to the phone. There's not only PvP deathmatches, but there's actually a campaign and co-op. 
The action is cover-based, so that gives you some idea what type of game it is. In some ways, a little bit Gears of War-like. In others, maybe a little Counter-Strike-like. If you can imagine somewhere between those two that leans a little bit closer to Gears of War, with a completely different theme, obviously, then you pretty much have Rival Fire. Number two, CSR Racing 2 is easily the most realistic racing game on mobile, period. There's no competition. It's a drag racing experience where players race custom-built supercars and participate in global crew events either alone or with friends. This game is visually stunning and has controls that are tight and innovative without getting over-the-top different. As I said, there isn't another racing game on mobile that looks this good. And when it has the gameplay to back it up, I mean seriously, how can you go wrong? If you want drag racing, you want CSR Racing too. Number one, Pokemon Go. What could I say about Pokemon Go that you haven't already heard? If you are living under a rock, it's essentially walking around, finding Pokemon, quote unquote, in the real world through an alternate reality type situation catching them, and doing Pokemon stuff. And it is evolving, they just added a new tracker system, which is great, because the original wasn't so great. And it's probably going to continue to evolve, much like the pocket monsters that you catch. It's a lot of fun, it's getting people out of their houses, people are meeting each other, having good experiences, having bad experiences, but the game itself, lots of fun. Couple of bonus games for you. First, Snake Bird, which is a game I think you're going to see more of because it takes a slow approach to the centipede type gameplay and makes it far more puzzle oriented and very hard. And Legend of Hieropolis, which is somewhere between a social RPG and a town building sim that's very addictive and fun. It could have a slightly better interface, but that shouldn't discourage you from trying it. It is actually a ton of fun. What were your favorite free mobile games over the past month? Let's meet in the comments and talk about that. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. And we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.